Look at that sunshine. Oh my God, it feels so good. Oh, and it actually feels warm too. It's the first proper warm day and it feels like spring has sprung. I've got a few new plants to get in the ground today and loads of jobs to do. Just feels so good for the sun to be out at long last after such a miserable wet winter. A bit of warmth is just what we all need and a bit of sunshine too. I've got a few jobs to do today and I thought you might like to join me. But first of all, I think we're going to get those new plants in the ground. So I've actually bought three of these beautiful little polyanthus because when I spotted them, the colours just, oh my gosh, aren't they stunning? Like you've got that lovely soft yellow with a touch of peach and then a blush of pink on the outer petal. Even the stem and buds have got like a dusky pink tone to them. They're stunning and we've got loads more flowers to come. So I think I'm going to pop these over in that border over there by the entrance. I've actually been quite busy and given this area a really good tidy and a weed. It's a spot that I call Grandma's Border because I planted it a couple of years ago now in memory of my grandmother. Just pull out that little bit of bindweed. Um, but yes, as soon as I saw these, I just fell in love. <laughs> and I haven't really bought any new plants for a while, apart from that hellebore, which you might see in another video. Um, so yes, these are just such a gorgeous little spring flower. Need to go a little bit deeper there. And they'll come back every year. And they don't mind a bit of shade. You can plant them underneath trees and they'll naturally sort of spread over the years as they self-seed. And I just think I've got a little spot here which could do with a little bit of spring colour. We do have more dotted throughout this border of the wild type where you've got the whites and the pinks and a buttery yellow. But this one I think is a hybrid of some description. I don't know its actual name as it was a little variety. Just do a little dead head there, encourage all those new shoots to come up. What do you think? <laughs> They're such a sweet little flower. I think Grandma would have liked them too. So I bought three in total. I haven't quite figured out where else to put them, but you can see all of these little seedlings coming up, some of which are weeds. That there is a, a dead nettle. So stinky, I really don't like that one. <laughs> but I think we're going to put another one here so that I can see it on my way into the plot. And it's just where I've got a gap because there's a lot of perennials in here. But yeah, it's such a nice little plant that's not too demanding. I don't actually have <laughs> my, um, my trowel to hand. So the hand fork is stepping in. What do you think? Just about there. It will get shaded out by the peonies that we have here that were originally from my grandmother's garden after she passed away. I took some of the plants from her garden, including these, and they are just an amazing flower. <laughs> it's about time I actually put some mulch on them. But with peonies, you don't want to cover the ground entirely. You just need to plant your mulch, uh, place your mulch around the outside because they like the sunshine to be on those crowns, but those red shoots coming up. Oh, they're so exciting. Nicely round there. Honestly, that sunshine just feels so good on my back. First, but first day of proper spring warmth, I think. I think that looks lovely there. And the other one we'll put over there. Remember, plants always look good in threes. And yes, you, the statue, I know it's not to everyone's taste, but she also lived in grandma's garden behind the pond that she had. And I know it's uh, very Marmite, but it brings back so much nostalgia to me, which is why I keep it here on my allotment. I love it when all of these perennials are out, the Napita and also the, um, the honesty, when that comes up and flowers in white, and all the forget-me-not as well, this border looks absolutely gorgeous. In about another month's time, come April, May, 
honestly, it's one of my favorite spots. So yeah, we're just gonna get this last one in and then move on to the next job. How's your garden doing in spring? Finally starting to see a few more dry days. And I'm starting to go through all my seeds and plan for a big sowing session because towards the end of March, April, that's when I start the majority of my seedlings. I haven't started my tomatoes yet. How about you? What have you got going? I did start my chilies the other week. I'm a little bit late on them and I'm really annoyed at myself <laughs> because especially if you want to grow the super hots, they, they take quite a bit more time to germinate and grow than your milder chilies. And it's good to pluck off the actual head rather than just the petals because then it won't waste energy creating seed, but it will do that at the end and hopefully spread because I think it's such a beautiful color. We'll give it a little bit of water as well, just so it sinks in nicely. Now also whilst I'm over here, apologies I can't look at you too much because you're right in the sun just there. Look, my rose, do you remember? I planted this last year and it's a climbing rose called Woolerton Old Hall and uh, nobody twigs at the time, <laughs> but my wedding was actually at a place called Woolerton Hall, not the Woolerton Hall, there's slightly different spellings there, but um, yes, my wedding was in the Camellia House at Woolerton Hall in Nottingham, and yes, I just thought it was the fitting rose for the year, and uh, it wasn't blooming in time for the wedding, but I didn't expect it to be, but it did have a couple of flowers on it. And I'm just so pleased to see that it's bursting into new growth. I haven't actually pruned this at all. And I don't think I will because there aren't that many side shoots yet to cut down. It's when these side shoots get really long. They're the ones you prune down. You don't want to take off that, that um, growth right at the top because that's going to lead its way all up and around the tree. But these little side shoots coming off are where this year's flowers will be. And the more horizontal you train your climbing rows, the more flowers you will get because that encourages all the hormones to create these side shoots which create your flowers. So rather than going straight up like that, really what we want to do is sort of angle it at a bit of a 45 degree angle going that way. Now I've already got some string on here but that's actually starting to rot a bit. This was for the um, Cabea scandens that I grew also up here. So we're just going to tie that in. And when you're tying in your roses and your climbers, you just be careful with what you're using because you can see a lot of um, bad gardening techniques where people use wire, but what they do is they push the rose behind the wire and then the rose rubs along that wire, which creates wounds and it creates well, it in turn lets in disease and all the nasties. So I've just wrapped a band around here and then I've got another loop and then you make a bit of a figure eight and then I'm gonna tie that in on the rows. And this is a flexi tie, which is soft and pliable. It's not gonna cut and I'm leaving a little bit of room there inside the figure of eight so that as it grows and it's gonna thicken, remember that stem there's more room for it to grow without damaging and cutting. So let's see where else I can train this. And also the other one. But you're going up as well. Oh, I can hear the blue tip behind me. I wonder if they're gonna nest this year. They didn't last year in my nest box, which was quite disappointing, but you know, can't win every year. If you've got enough, you can just tie it and then tie it on like that. Not quite sure why I didn't do it before, but hey. <laughs> How's that looking from your side? I think I'm just gonna wrap it in like that. And then this is hopefully gonna put on lots and lots of growth this season. So I'll be able to train it up as I get that lovely, soft, supple growth, which is really flexible. There we go. So it's kept in that horizontal growth We'll see where all these lovely shoots come out. And as it grows, 
throughout the season, I will be tying it in further because wind can be very damaging and especially these young, new, fresh leaves. Gosh, they're so soft. <laughs> they almost feel damp, like they've just, just emerged. But yes, that's nicely tied in now uh, to support it. Another thing that I'll be doing is to mulch the base of all my roses with some very well rotted manure because roses absolutely love it. And that will give them a lot of feed for the growing season as well. So that's another job done. Now, my strawberry cages are going to have a bit of a revamp this year. There's a big project about to happen with this. Uh, but I've just spotted in here, I do have some primulas or primroses in here that I might as well move over there. There's a bright pink one here that I think will look absolutely gorgeous and it needs saving because this area is going to get smothered soon. More on that in a separate video. So I'm just, now is a great time to be moving and dividing your perennials and I'm just using my hand fork again <laughs> to dig this one out of the ground and save it from the big project that's going to happen. But I do have a lot of bindweed and also, what's the other one? Ground elder in here. So before I move it into that border, I'm just thoroughly cleaning the roots, going through them to make sure I'm not going to move any of that ground elder or bindweed into the new border. How about that? It's a nice magenta colour, that one. Been nibbled a bit, but let's move it over. Oh, there's a foxglove as well. I'll have that. Foxglove and an honesty plant that looks like it's going to flower very soon. And these spread so easily by seed. Again, I need to make sure that all the roots are clean on these before I put them in. Over there. Now, because I've already got a few foxgloves at this end, this is where I'm going to put the one I'm moving because plants look great when you cluster them together. And especially foxgloves, they're so impressive. And I remember last year, do you remember I had some ridiculous foxgloves. Some of them were like almost eight, nine foot tall. And I just know that as soon as I walk through the gate, this will be the first thing I see. And I just want them to make that grand welcome for me when I get to the allotment. So uh, these are gonna go over here. And because we've moved them so quickly, they'll never even know that they've been moved. Oh look, there's a great big black cloud that's appeared. How oh, lovely. Where's all that sunshine gone? Well, there's an elephant in the room and it's this great big pile of compostables that I've not yet moved into the compost bin because I couldn't get to it, but I've cleared a bit of a path. <laughs> it's still a massive mess down there, but I'm going to move it because it's doing my head in. So let's get shifted. Now, I was thinking about using my wheelbarrow, but sometimes it's just easier to get your fork in there. Oh man, that cloud is coming over. <laughs> I hope it's not going to chuck it down. And um, just use a little bit of brute strength. Oh my God, that is heavy. Okay, maybe not. I'm going to need the wheelbarrow. It was crazy how much your borders create. And all of this is just fantastic compost material. Most of this is quite brown, but it won't be long until we're adding lots of greens as well, which will help speed up that composting process, especially now that the weather's starting to get warmer. Oh gosh, this is gonna take a bit longer than I thought. And once, once all the beds are cleared, I can then get on some mulch and I'm hoping I should have enough of my own homegrown, homemade compost. Look 
that robin just enjoying a bath in my bucket of muddy water. Poor thing. My bird bath is cracked so it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> I feel bad for this little guy. <laughs> Although he doesn't seem to mind. <laughs> Bit warm, isn't it? He's been enjoying all the... I think having all of that garden waste there has actually helped protect the soil somewhat over all the wet that we've had. But now it's time to clear it all away so that I can mulch it. Now if I'm going to get much more in there, it's going to need a bit of encouragement, if you know what I mean. Oh, right up into the blackthorn. Do you do the compost heap bounce? <laughs> There we are. That should get it rotting a lot quicker as well when there's no massive air pockets. But still plenty of air because all those sticks in there creates lots of layers of air pockets. Whew, well that's certainly got my heart rate going. Now this bed here is where I grew all my dahlias last year for the wedding. And they are still currently in the ground. I haven't lifted them. But what I did do was mulch them with lots of wood chip. But I've decided now I'm going to rake it all back to expose the soil. Because again, we've had such a wet winter, this is gonna help on these warm days for the soil to dry out a little bit. And I think very soon I will be digging some of them up because this isn't where I want the dahlias this year. And I've obviously got a lot more than I think I need. So uh, I haven't, still haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with them. I might even actually try growing some from cuttings. And I'll probably just move this wood chip under uh, perhaps the apple tree. Because I don't really want wood chip on my growing beds. And if you've got dahlias that are currently in the ground it's still far too early for them to be showing any signs of growth but well, i think they should be okay in there if they've survived the wet that was what could have done them this year you know i am tempted to dig one up and see you know i might just stay here until the sun sets tonight because i'm enjoying this so much and i just sat down and just took it all in for a bit because I mean, listen to the birds. Spring is finally here. <laughs> well, before I chill out for the rest of the evening on the plot, should we have a little look round to see what else is going on? As is tradition, I'm at the gate, the famous gate <laughs> that I keep rather secret garden-esque with all the ivy. Oh wow, look at all these colours, that late evening sun and you can also see the horizon line better from up here with the hedge being cut but grandma's border is looking a lot more tidy. Still got lots of little weedlings coming through but you can now see all of the perennials coming back to life quite quickly actually now that we've had you know, a few sunny days. That's just what we needed. I've got the roses that I gave a little prune. And what other perennials have we got here? So hardy geranium there. Oh, can you hear that wren? That's one of my favourite bird songs. Well, I probably say that about them all though, don't I? <laughs> really big clump of primroses there. And then look, those red shoots. We saw some of those earlier. That's one of Grandma's peonies. Nice clump there. And then the newly planted primula, or polyanthus, should I say. And 
Oh, I think it's going to be a good year for the peonies. I wonder what other plants are going to show signs of fantastic growth after that wet winter we've had. I've got a feeling the roses, they might also have loved it. Now you know how I planted that rose last year up my dead plum tree. Rather than replacing the dead tree with a new tree, that was the decision I went for, the climber, to go up it. Well, I'm just a little bit worried now, have I made the wrong decision? Because it's getting um, rather wobbly and I just don't know how long it's going to last before it topples. <laughs> But when the time comes, I'll keep the rose there and just grow it up for something else, maybe an obelisk. But I do have a plant over here that's really special that's still in a pot. If I can climb my way over. And at the minute, it just looks like a bunch of sticks. But those little buds there are going to turn into the most beautiful flower. And this is a multi-stem shrub called Amelanchia also grows as a tree. It's one of the best trees and shrubs, particularly if you've got clay soil, wet soil. Amelanchia is fantastic and it's got the beautiful blossom. Uh, you also get the berry, its common name is the June berry. So it does fruit and it is edible. And I tell my customers at work that it tastes a little bit like a blueberry, but not as good. Have you ever tried one? Let me know what you think. But it's in a 10 litre pot so it's a good sized shrub and it definitely needs to be potted up. I've had it in this pot for a while now. Um, so I'm wondering, maybe I put it in this border or maybe, I don't know whether to keep it in a big pot until the tree dies and then put it there. I don't know but I think temporarily I'm just going to have to at least pot it up a bit so it doesn't get uh, too stressed. But it's going to put on lots of beautiful flowers in the next month or so. So watch out for that because it's going to be beautiful. As I mentioned earlier, we've got a big project coming soon on the strawberry cages. So look out for that. It's rather exciting. And further down, I've done lots of weeding, bed clearing. I, can't, I don't have the heart to get rid of all the fox uh, forget-me-nots. But these are the alliums. So they're going to flower well by the looks of things. The Arches are still going strong as well, my Wilco arches are um, pretty sturdy, so I think my staking technique has done well. Although it does look like they're showing signs of rust, which, you know, the other reviews did warn me about that. Hopefully it doesn't get too weak. I haven't actually thought too much about what I'm going to grow up this year. Do I, oh, there's a kestrel. Do I grow more squash? I haven't sown any of the cobea, although that was really fun to grow. They do need to be started quite early on. And last year I started them in February. Um, I'm not sure, what do I do? Hmm, probably we'll try the squash again. Hmm, have to think about that one. And, oh, this spot looks absolutely stunning. Minus the ladder. <laughs> but all the hellebores standing proud with the daffodils and we've even got a few tulips coming as well a lot of things seem quite early this year um, i know some of them do come up earlier but we've got one here and the daffodils have spread quite well i didn't plant half of this much i definitely didn't plant the ones with the orange centers and they're just sort of naturalizing under the apple tree and down here Look at the rhubarb, been loving all the wet. Look at those red stems, oh my gosh, they look so succulent and tasty. Mmm, <sighs> get ready for the crumbles. Oh wow, the apple tree, I've only just noticed, the buds are starting to burst. And we will have apple blossom in the coming weeks, although not usually until April, May. Oh yes, I just remembered, you've not seen my gaping hole. <laughs> Do you remember that big holly, sh not holly, uh, ivy that was right down in there and taking over? It was way too tall. Well, 
I dealt with it. <laughs> I actually remember I received a comment from somebody on the video when I pointed it out. And they says, oh, are you going to get your husband to sort it out with a chainsaw? And I thought, ah, don't need men, don't need big tools. So I uh, set about tackling it on my own. <laughs> and it took a while, it took about 15, 20 minutes with just a handsaw, my silky Zubat, which I absolutely love and would recommend to everybody. Uh, yeah, just a saw, a bit of a mattock and a bit of, you know, muscle bit of elbow grease and unfortunately it uh it went over there <laughs> i tried to bring it over but there was just no way because that's the way it wanted to fall which means i now get a gorgeous view down to the orchard below which you guys haven't really seen much of before but there's about probably a 10 foot drop down there uh, i really am at the bit of top of a hill right here on my plot and I asked about this because it kind of belongs to the allotment site. Um, and there was a guy who used to um, help prune the apples and in return he'd take the apples and use them at his brewery. And obviously there's a lot of apple trees down there and they take a lot of training and pruning and looking after. And anyway, I don't think he does that anymore. Uh, so basically nobody owns that plot. It kind of belongs to the allotment site. And I started daydreaming and thinking, maybe I could get it. Maybe I should take on another plot. I mean, it's right next door. It's quite a big size. Loads of apple trees, but most of all, it's got the most beautiful little Victorian original summer house, almost behind my shed. You've probably seen the chimney pot quite a few times. I just thought, oh, that'd be so nice. You know, I could sit there, I could have beehives. That'd be a great place for some beehives, wouldn't it? Uh, then the reality started to sink in, like, these are apple trees and they need a lot of pruning in the winter. And I only have just about finished all my winter jobs on my little plot <laughs> for this year. Um, could I really take that on? Oh, it would be nice though, imagine all the, the cider and the fruit juice you could make. And yeah, like harvesting all those apples, I mean, can you even imagine? <laughs> I think it'd have to be like a free-for-all, you know, take what you can type job for everybody because, oh, but, oh man, you know, I really would love to keep bees. And uh, yeah, I was just kind of tempted, especially with that summer house. Oh, it would be nice, but I don't have that time, unfortunately. Oh, it's just a gorgeous time of the day. I feel like I've not really got much done today, but moving all of that actually <laughs> took a lot of work. I've just got that one to get rid of now. Oh, the joy. And down here, I've got so much honesty. Oh, I wish I moved this over into Grandma's border, but can you see it's going to be flowering in the next month, so I don't know how happy it'd be if I moved it. I might try and move a few and leave the others, as they seem quite happy where they are. And I don't really need the space just yet. But they're all in this border as well, so I might move the smaller ones. Let's go for a little walk and a sit down, I think. Sit down on the bench. Ah, and look, I can already see. Can you see down there the polyanthus that I planted? Ping! Doing just what I wanted them to. So this is my view from the bench. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good now. We're getting there. But this is one of my blueberry plants. I'm going to focus quite a bit on fruit this year, I think, because you just can't beat it. It's so much better than the shops and it looks like it's going to be a good year for blueberries. So I must make sure uh, I've got enough of the mesh I use to stop birds from pinching them. Uh, but yes, oh man, the bees are going to be well happy when this flowers because it is covered in buds. Look at that. Oh, now what might look like a bunch of weeds? There is actually a few edible things in here. Some chard that I'm not going to touch because that looks a bit past it. But this, I always forget the name, Salad Burnet, is that it? And it tastes a lot like cucumber. So it's great for putting in a salad. Just a really fresh 
cucumbery taste. Oh my gosh. It always surprises me every time. Just how much it tastes like cucumber. <laughs> Honestly, if you've not tried it, it's just great. And it, you know, you can put it in your salad, take it to work, and it doesn't make your salad go all wet and mushy like cucumber does. Mmm. Wow, that light tonight is beautiful. Okay. It does go a little bitter after you've had quite a bit. <laughs> Nothing to see in the tunnel, so we're not going to bother with that today. You can see my tree in full bloom. That's the blackthorn, looking very white. And yeah, here is the pot at the middle of March 2024. Oh, what a great day. How's your garden looking? How's the weather treating you? Uh, thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to enjoy a bit of unwinding now. Sit down, enjoy the bird song, and maybe watch my fish. They were doing fine, by the way. Somebody asked, how are they? And I always forget to show you. They're fine. They survived the winter. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.